Yo, I'm Matthew Kingpin. I know the title's a bit inflammatory, so I'm not wasting any time. I'm gonna get right into my reasoning. I'll be making three main points as to why the gun itself makes its user much harder to kill than a standard rifle, why the op is actually more of a supportive role and how that actually elevates its effectiveness, and why it's a vital part of the meta despite how overpowered it is. I'll also be responding to some of the common retorts against the idea of the op's meta-defining and defying place I've heard over the years. So what makes the opera a harder target to pin down than your average rifler? To show why that's the case, I need to first explain the concept of hit confirming. In FPS games, and indeed in any game where the player engages in combat scenarios, there are three steps in any engagement with an enemy target. Whether it be human, or an AI controlled by the game itself, or in the case of your teammates, somehow both at once. First, there is acknowledging the presence of the enemy you would like to mega murder, called target recognition. You know, looking out and seeing the guy you want to kill. Incidentally, this is why agent skins are so maligned by a notable portion of the CS community. Some of them actively prevent this first step of engagement through their camouflage color schemes. Not Rexall though, his renaissance era immaculately sculpted jawline stands out for miles. Whew. Back on topic though. Second, after you look at your target, you aim and then fire your weapon at that whom you would disallow their continued existence. The guy you want to kill. Some might be wondering, that seems like the whole process, how is there another step? To elaborate, the third part of any engagement is hit slash kill confirming, which is the time between you actually hitting the target and your brain registering that you've hit the target. Do you know how when you watch a clip of someone playing Counter-Strike and they hit a nutso shot that it takes them an extra half a second or so to start celebrating? What? What? That's that intermittent period I'm talking about where the mind processes the feedback the game gives it. How does all this factor into the op? Normally with a rifle, engagements tend to look like players standing, or perhaps 80-80 strafing, and fighting not only until their opponent dies, but also until their brain registers that their opponent has died. That's why people tend to keep shooting an extra few rounds after the guy they are aiming at is already dead. They themselves haven't processed the kill, even if the game already has. However, with an op, because the nature of the gun is only firing one shot at a time and retreating, there's no reason to even care about the third step of the engagement, because as a player, you're not able to shoot again anyway for another second. That's why the dominant strategy with an op is to play peak unpeak or hold an angle and then fall back, because that extra half a second you'd normally have to stay peaked out can essentially be skipped by just watching the kill feed or waiting for the little flash of light on the UI that informs you of the kill you received. Either you hit the shot or you didn't. You can check the kill feed afterwards if you did. This is also why jiggle peeking with weapons like the Scout or Deagle can be so deadly. They're only on the screen for the fraction of the second it takes for them to shoot, not long enough to confirm their kill like a rifler would be. What makes the op especially powerful over those two guns though is that playing peek unpeak is made far more viable when you don't have to flick for a target as small and as mobile as a player's head to score a one hit kill as the op can score these types of kills on any part of the body minus the legs. It's a much easier task to flick for a body-shaped circle in a quarter of a second than it is to aim for a head-shaped circle. Because the opera can spend less time being able to be shot, they are inherently much harder to kill. So what makes the op more of a supporting role? After all, a community-designated support player role has existed for many years, and so too has a designated opera player role. How can users of the $4,750 rifle be lumped into the former category? Starting out, to clarify, oppers do not share the same responsibilities as traditional support players in that they're typically not the type to help with executes by throwing utility, dropping weapons, etc. The support they offer is of a different type entirely. Oppers change the dynamic of what positions players choose to occupy, what utility those players throw, and the boldness of certain types of playstyles that players can sometimes exhibit. Let me explain. Firstly, there are many different types of peaks in Counter-Strike, one of which is a type of peak where an attacking player will swing out on a defending player holding an angle and attempt to tap their head using the speed and suddenness of their aggression to catch their enemy off guard and out-aim them without throwing any type of supporting utility that would give away their push. This maneuver is called a dry peak, and it's a common tactic as because the aggressing player doesn't have to factor in reaction time into their shot, as they know when they'll be aggressing. Whatever advantage the defender inherently has by holding a longer range angle and simply having to wait can be mitigated by not knowing when an attacker will peek out on them. The op, however, changes the usage of this tactic exponentially. 
Recall back when I stated that it's much easier to flick to a body-sized target than a head-sized one. That ease of aim is enough to eclipse the general peeker's advantage of an attacker, meaning if you peek out onto an op holding an angle, provided that said opper isn't laughably incompetent or has fallen asleep, you're 14 different types of dead, unless you perfectly pre-fire their exact location, something that's impossible to know without perfect intel. Since dry peeking is so common and opping effectively neuters it, players are instead forced into doing different types of peeks to compensate, riskier types of peeks, or pressured into expending utility to be able to effectively combat enemy ops, which ties into my next point, oppers force the team that opposes them to spend extra money to effectively fight them. Now, utility in CS is something that has evolved greatly ever since Astralis basically revolutionized its implementation back during the middle part of CSGO's life cycle, but one thing it has always been a tool for is dealing with those pesky op players. Taking or defending certain positions is made much more costly with a CT side opper locking down certain angles and or a T side opper keeping the defense from taking too much early map control. The threat of an op right around the corner is just as deadly as the sniper itself. It's a debuff that is psychological in nature. Even if the player themselves doesn't feel pressured from the scoped weapon's presence, their bank balance will certainly be feeling that way as they are forced to buy a levy of grenades just to have a reasonable chance of driving the opera off of certain angles. With how I've been describing this almighty weapon of power, you might be under the impression that I dislike its implementation in Counter-Strike, but that's actually quite the opposite of how I feel about it. Opping is a vital part of the meta, and necessary for the health of the game despite how overpowered it is. Why is that so? The op is a kind of hard check to very aggro playstyles and just attempting to roll over the enemy team, both on T and CT side. It prevents the game from devolving into a swing fest, as while dry peeking has disadvantages for sure, due to the inherent peeker's advantage that comes from swinging positions that are forced to wait for an aggressor to peek out onto them, it's a bit of a dominant strategy in a lot of ways, especially if entire teams coordinate and decide to do so in what is commonly referred to as a double peak. I firmly believe if the AWP were any less powerful, it wouldn't hold its role as an anti-aggro weapon nearly as well as it does. In fact, and admittedly this is crossing into theory crafting territory, I believe the rise of a player like Donk in the game's current meta as of February 2024 is due in no small part to oppers not quite finding their stride in CS2 just yet. While Donk's aim and crosshair placement are absolutely superb, they're basically just New Game Plus Nico. that aim is no match against a competent opper holding the angle against them. Remember that flicking to a head is much harder and slower than flicking to a body. I'm simplifying this explanation by quite a bit, and I'm no pro analyst, but that's just my theory on part of why things are so swing happy right now in CS2's meta. Now into the retorts. One of the most common straw men I've heard used against the idea that the op is overpowered is the phrase, well if the op is so powerful, why don't you see teams buying 5 ops every round? As I've mentioned earlier, the op is more of a supportive gun than a bread and butter workhorse weapon like an AK or an M4. It's not just the op itself, it's what the op allows you and your team as a whole to accomplish, that's why it's so strong. Not to mention it's expensive for both sides, some setups that might even benefit from double ops tend to get ignored just for the economic risk that comes from spending close to two entire one rounds worth of cash just for one player to get an op and fully kit it out. To use a different version of this argument to demonstrate what I mean, if IGLs are the most important role of the game, why isn't everyone an IGL? You see what I mean? It's the fact that the gun is supportive is its strength, not the gun itself. It's the fact that the gun multiplies your team's effectiveness rather than just adds onto it. Another common comeback I hear about why the op isn't actually overpowered, typically in combination with some form of get good and maybe a slur for some added juvenile spice, is that utility can be used to hard counter op players, something I mentioned earlier. And while that is true that flashes, smokes, etc. are effective tools for neutralizing op players in certain situations, those grenades also work similarly on rifle players too. It's not really a slam dunk to say nades counter them when nades counter every type of weapon. The reason grenades are brought into the discussion so prominently when ops are mentioned is that utility is one of the only ways to counter competent op players, as opposed to going against a rifler whom, while nades will increase the chance of getting kills against them, dry peeking and out aiming them is in many cases quite viable as well to take them out. 
some players might say the price point itself makes the gun balanced, and to that I honestly can't really argue much outside of saying I don't happen to think the price of the weapon itself factors into its meta-defining capability. However, if you personally think it balances the weapon, that's valid. Myself, I think that the price of the op is made to discourage CT side from purchasing multiple of them at once, and to mechanically solidify the weapon's importance, but I understand if you think otherwise, it's a pretty pricey firearm. That's about all I have to say for this production. Why I wanted to make this video was partially because I dislike when people claim things that can be easily disproven, but also because I would like to see oppers find their way again in CS2. Much as it's cool to see Nico level riflers come in and destroy people with well-placed one-taps on enemy domes, the game is far more interesting when the magic stick comes out to play as well. And I think the op's potential in CS2 is only just barely being explored, mostly because of the one huge new mechanic in CS2, the smoke clearing ability of the frag grenade. Much as CS doomers want to claim that the game is dead, dying, etc., I firmly believe that CS2 will grow to be twice the game, pun intended, CSGO ever was if its potential is capitalized on. As always, please give me any and all feedback that you have to provide, it is all read and appreciated deeply. Burn your dread, and that's all.